Oh, there's no music playing. I'm just excited. Hello, howdy ho. Welcome to Story of Seasons, A Wonderful Life. Um, let's get started. It all started with a letter. Can't remember how many years it had been since I got one. See, I had this friend once. We used to share all our hopes and dreams with each other. And the sender of this letter is Kid. <laughs> Sounds so sinister. The letter was all, but li all about life in the city. The kid asked a bunch of questions about farming, and at the end wrote, I'd like to try working the farm. To a city kid, I guess life in Forgotten Valley must have seemed appealing. It's gonna take some getting used to not calling it Forget-Me-Not Valley. I don't know why it's Forgotten Valley now. I don't imagine they would have copyrighted all the names. I don't know. Well, it took me by surprise, I'll say that much. I closed my eyes and saw my old friend smile just like it was yesterday. Should I be on this side? I'm on this side. It takes guts to travel all the way from the big city to Forgotten Valley. A place most folks, well, forgot about. Oh, okay. I don't want to be in the way. Hmm. I'll go down there for a second. Okay. So, character customization. So, um, since there is no sex or gender kind of... I mean, there is, but this is how they're doing it now. You can have any type of face that you want because they don't want to just do, oh, this is exclusively the male face and this is what you get if you're a girl, you know. And then they have more slanted eyes for inclusivity, potentially for like Asian folks or people with an epicanthic fold. That's what that's called, by the way. Um, which involves anybody that lives in certain regions. Uh, anyway, this one's interesting. I would say it's, I like it, but her lip, or their lip looks kind of strange. So. Um, but yeah, there are two more masculine kind of looking ones and then two more feminine ones, I suppose. So, I'm gonna go with this one because I'm basic. And then you have the skin colors. So, the lightest or fairest, and you keep going to tan and tanner, darker. Um, I would say I'm probably this one. I don't know why I'm just making myself. I never really... I'm gonna turn this down slightly. As I was saying, I I don't know why I don't ever like make a really cool character, you know, look kind of anime style or something, but I just don't. Uh, what color are my eyes? This is not very flattery. Hmm. I'm gonna go with gray. They're like greenish, blue, gray. So. They have really pretty eye colors. I will give them that. They did well. Alright, we're just gonna go with it. Yes. Okay, and then the hairstyles. So, same thing. You can do short or long for your character. And I don't know which one I want. I will say there's not a there's not a lot of curly hairstyles. But a lot of people actually have curly or wavy hair. So like me, I actually straighten it most of the time and it's just up and they have more braids, so that's cool, but they only have two uh, hairstyles for braids, which I like both of them, so that's good. Then they have this one too. Ooh, 
will be boring because the pony. Uh, I don't know what color my hair is. It's like a mix between, well right now it looks really red in this light. It's not quite that, I don't know. I have like darker brown hair, which games have an issue with. There's no like very good dark brown uh, hair options. Like it reminds me of The Sims. There's not very good brown hair options. And there's only like one blonde color typically. I mean, when you do like a generic, like if you just played like The Sims 4 basic pack, or even The Sims 3 or whatever. It's like reddish brown like this, black, blonde, and gray. <laughs> so anyway, this is really more close than maybe. I don't, this one's pretty close. I don't know. I'm between them. See, and I could be cool, like a cool anime character. Nope, not going to. All right, and then you can do one of two outfits at the beginning, and you can buy more outfits throughout the game. So, and anyone can wear them, so that's cool. Um, let's put a name. So, many of you probably do not know this. This is my, this is my name. I usually put Jojo, Jojo Ma, whatever. I usually put my YouTube name, but I might change it. So I'm just gonna put my name because I made myself. And I am a she, her, but you can also do they, them, or he, him, and then I chose that one. So you'll have to stick with your name and pronouns once you finalize them. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. I'm going to move back up here. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. So you're Adrian, huh? I'm real sorry to hear about your old man. He was a good guy. Going to make a lot of friends in the next life, I bet. I gotta say, though, you must take after him. No average youngin' would want to pack up and come to Forgotten Valley, of all places. Well, once you spend a little time here, I'm sure you'll figure out if it's really the life you want. Ugh, I should have gone with the lighter hair. It just looks also darker because I'm in this room. Oh well. Alright, this is it. This is it! Look at our farm! This is the land your old man and I found. The buildings are run down, sure, but you can still use them. Soil's fertile enough to grow crops on, too. See this pasture? If you spread some fertilizer on it, you'll have a place for your livestock to graze. Oh, look at that. Look at the cliffs in the background. That's where we just came from. So, how about it, kid? Ready to take over the farm? Yeah! Let's get started. Huh, that's what I like to hear. I'm sure your old man's cheering you on, too. Come on, then. Might as well give you the grand tour. This here's the barn. It's where you'll raise cows, horses, and sheep. I'll take you inside later. So this is- we went over some of this stuff, you know, in the other videos. <laughs> Here's the shipping bin. Get to know it, because it's going to be your best friend. If you milk or any other product to ship, put products to ship, put them in there. I'll sell them for you at the city market the next morning. If there's something you want me to buy, write it down in the ledger here. I love the little lantern next to it, too. Over there is your storage shed and your food shed. I mean storage. Food storage. If your bag ever starts getting too full, you can throw items you don't need in one of those. Guys, I'm so excited. I'm so happy. I'll put the smaller items you buy in any profits you make here. Okay. Other folks might leave gifts or rewards around here, too, so keep an eye out for those. That's cool. So basically, you can check that every day, I guess, if you become friends with people or do something special. This is the coop. You might have guessed, but this is where you'll raise your chickens. That there is one of your fields. You can plant seeds there, but you'll need a hoe to plow the soil first. Speaking of which, I got a few packs of seeds and some basic tools for you. Try using them when you get a chance. By the way, thank you, Tack, because that shit is expensive. <laughs> seeds, too. I mean, have you ever gone to a plant store? 
Seeds are not expensive, I guess. But something that's already growing, pretty expensive. Huh. Guess a couple stray dogs settled in here. It looks like they've already warmed up to you. Okay. Well, why can't I just have both? I'm on a farm. Look at all this land I have. I'll let you keep one, but just one. If this is... You let me? What? Why can't we have both? You have one, and I'll have one. Or something. Alright? I ain't a huge fan of dogs. Oh, that's why. I'm not even reading. Now, go on and pick a favorite. Y'all... It's not even fair. Look. Like, look at what they did to him. His face is, like, kind of square and squished. Not really squished. He's got a long snout, actually. I don't know. He just looks kind of funny. They could have done a better job. They could have helped him out a little bit. <laughs> the pointy-eared one... It's always cute. I'm sorry. Alright then, you, gotta, you gonna name it or what? Uh... I'll name it after my dog. My little Goku. He's a huge baby. Sounds good. I'll try to find an owner for the other pup next time I head to the city. You better. A good owner, too. Since you don't want to keep it. Rude. Guess I'll build the little one a doghouse, too. <sighs> Jack. He can just live in my house. It's fine. And this here is your house. Speak of the devil. I tried to fix it up a bit before you arrived, so you should be able to settle right in. This is cool. Oh, I want to change my hair color. Huh? Oh, my house? I don't know what voices I'm doing anymore. See that cabin over there? That's where I live. Well, that covers the main facilities. Ain't much, but if you save up, maybe you can expand some of them. Oh, before I forget. Me not. Valley. I said we'd go in the barn later, didn't I? I almost said bar. Well, it's later. Follow me! So many of the scenes and the way that he talks are... Like, almost spot on to the original game. I bought you a cow as a welcome present. Her feed bin is all set up over there. Oh, and she'll need a name too. Okay. So, I didn't name my first cow this in the last, in the original game playthrough that I'm doing, but this is a name that I got from the movie The Duchess, and I've loved it ever since, and I've, like, I would totally name my child that. It's, like, Harriet, and then you call him Hario, but it's cooler if you're British, so, like, I don't think I would be able to name my kid that, because here they'd be like, Hario? Especially where I live, so yeah, I can never get with it. So Instead of a child. I just named my first cow on almost every game Hario Hario, huh? I like it. She's our first animal so take good care of her She gave birth about ten days ago, so she'll produce plenty of milk as long as she's healthy You should be able to milk her twice a day She's cute. The barn looks really good, actually. I like the way they, they did the lighting and stuff. I think that about sums up the farm. Oh, wait. We've got to decide on a name for it. Any ideas? Well, now that you mention it, I do have a big idea. Or an idea. Everything's big here. Big Tex Farm. Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> Big Tex Farm? I can't read. Hmm. Has a nice ring to it. Sure. While I've got you, I might as well introduce you to the locals. I'm no social butterfly, but a young un like you is sure to charm the heck out of them. Ready to go? Hmm? What's the matter? Nothing. I'm ready. We ain't passing on no intros around here. We gotta fight. We gotta... Learn their new names, after all. Alright, let's get to it then. Hop to it! This here's the Layover Inn. Tay? I hope I'm saying these right. Tay runs the place with his wife, Lou. 
Why does she get to be Lou and he's Tay? Their son Rock lives with them too. And why do we keep Rock of all the names? Oh, and there's a girl named Nami who's staying up on the second floor. Okay, I officially apologize for assumptions made in my video. Okay, it wasn't really an assumption. It was a translation error. If you've ever watched it, I mean, I guess I could link it. Then, uh, I... They did a weird thing with the pronouns for some of the characters, and I didn't realize it until, like, I did the villager video and somebody commented about it. Um, but there's a lot of comments on my marriage candidate video, uh, when we were learning about the game coming out, because I said that Nami could be non-binary because they're giving that option to the, the player, and I was like, oh, well, their pronouns are weird, so... Maybe they made Nami non-binary, but <laughs> anyway, she's a girl, and most of us are rejoicing because we wanted her to stay who she was, so. This is Gar- I say most of us, most of us on the- out of the people who commented on the video. This is Gary and his wife, Nina. Gary? <sighs> why does Nina get to stay Nina? I just don't get why they changed some names and not all names, and this is Chris. Okay, I was like, where's your family? That's Chris's husband, Sully, and their son, Hugh. I just, like, why can't he be Wally? I love that. What's up, guys? Also, we get them in the first year. That's new. We don't get them in the first year in the original games. Gavin here, why, is, uh, sorry, I'm not trying to be so critical. Gavin here is owner and head barista at the Bluebird Cafe. Molly helps him out part-time. Molly. Perhaps the most tragic name change. <laughs> Rip. Romana here owns the villa where she lives with her granddaughter, Lumina. No. Her granddaughter lives with her. Bitch. She owns that house. <laughs> Their butler over there is called Sebastian. Wow. The way he looked like... Bro, I'm a human. Like... Not just a butler. Gustava! Playing for us already. Oh, the guy playing guitar? That's Gustafa. He's a real character, always strumming some tune or another. That's silly, Gustafa. He's a freaking hippie, bro. You can just say it. Look at our new guy. Well, yeah, they did him dirty, honestly. That guy over there is Gordy. First of all, Gordy... Second of all, they really didn't have to change his character design that much to make him better, or like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people still would have married him as uh, the original character. A man of few words, but a real passionate artist, apparently. Look at that structure. She. That's Vesta. She runs the agricultural farm here. No, I run the agricultural farm here. It's really a ranch, more so. Over there is Matthew, her little brother, who was formerly Marlin. No one says that. Cecilia, who is Celia, and I don't know why she has to be Cecilia. Cecilia! Helps them both with the farm work. They sell seeds here, so take a look at their stock when you get a chance. Yes, I definitely will. Mm hmm. The other folks live in that direction. We've got the twins who craft fireworks and an oddball scientist. Best not to ask. Best not to ask about his experiments. Plus, there's an archaeologist staying in the p in the tent up by the waterfall there. He and his assistant dig up all sorts of weird stuff. She's an archaeologist too. Not just his assistant. Honestly, it's 2023. All right, that should cover everyone. I'm sure you're exhausted. It's been a long day, so take it easy for now. If you think of any other questions for me later, don't you hesitate to ask, all right? Don't hesitate. Yes, sir. Oh yeah, there's something I forgot to give you. This camera belonged to your old man. Ain't the newest model, obviously, but it does the job well enough. Let's try taking a test photo real quick. 
Woo, I was gonna change my hair color, but thanks. You can use it whenever you're feeling a uh, photographic. Now, get some rest, kid. You've earned it. Why is Tack the same height as me? Am I tall or is everyone short? Ooh. Heart. Come on now. Never seen a nature sprite like that before. Look how cute. Jack. Hey, hey, who could it be? Ace. Beats the heck out of me. Far as I know, we're the only nature sprites in Forgotten Valley. Yeah, yeah, so what are we looking at then? Good question. Hey, buddy, what's your name? Buddy. Adrian? Oh, Adrian? Gotcha, so you're a nature sprite named Adrian. So I guess they're calling themselves nature sprites. Roger that. The name's Ace. Nice to meet ya. Um, I'm Jack. Nice to greet ya. And my name's Hart. Let's all be friends, okay? Yes. Beginnings. Look at our house. Okay. Well, apparently this isn't going to record the sound all the time. I don't know why. Okay, so an hour has actually passed because I already recorded something and it didn't have the music. Uh, so if you look at your nightstand, you have all these different options. You can do sleep, journal, which is saving the game, encyclopedia, which... It's probably self-explanatory. Animals, byproducts, crops, recipes, fish, tools, archaeological finds, records, facilities, mini games, and residents. So that's actually the record of your game play stuff. I'm sure it shows you like how many you've shipped, things like that. Corkboard, there's our picture. Um, album, which we haven't taken any photos of anything yet, so there's that. Takakura's notes. Okay, this is important. So we will look at them because we're gonna get yelled at about them anyway. Starting off, this says Valley Life, Seasons in the Valley, Staying Healthy, Potential Partners. So, Valley Life. You've got lots to learn about farming. They ain't much, but I hope these notes will answer your questions. First, you gotta learn how to make a living. Try to sell any crops you pick. More profits mean more facilities. Walk around the valley and chat up the locals too. Give them enough gifts and they'll take a liking to you. We got four seasons here. Spring, summer, autumn, and winter. In that order. Each season lasts about 10 days, so use your time wisely. The year goes by faster than you might think. We have a festival for each season. Check your calendar for more info. They're good times to socialize. Staying healthy. Farm work takes a, no a ton of stamina. Be careful you don't overdo it. Eat proper meals and get plenty of rest. If you work too hard or get hungry, you'll lose stamina pretty fast, so be sure to eat a hearty meal. If you plan on staying here for the long haul, you'll probably want to find a partner to spend your life with. Hopefully you'll find somebody who really clicks with you in your first year here. Go get him, kid! Don't you worry about me, tech. Tools ain't the only hoes around here. Alright, farm life, shipping, ordering, keeping more animals, buying fodder, facility expansion, selling animals, milk processing room, seed maker, the fertilizer maker, the fertilizer tank, the pond. Okay. You'll probably spend most of your time caring for crops and animals. Take it easy and learn things as you go. Need something sold? Ship it. Need more supplies? Order them. The more you do, the more the farm will grow. You can ship crops and dairy products if you put them in the shipping bin by your house. Keep in mind that we can't ship low quality produce or anything that wasn't grown on our farm. Anything you ship, I take with me in the morning, in the early mornings to sell in the city. Have your stuff ready to go the night. Ugh. Have your stuff ready to go the night before. There's a ledger next to the shipping bin. If you want to order something for the farm, use it. Want to raise more animals? Go to the ledger and pick order animal or order breeding. Only females can be bred. If you don't have any males of the same type, we can get one brought in from the city. If you pick order feed, I'll buy the fodder or feed for you the next day. Always keep an eye out for your always keep an eye on your supplies. 
If you pick order facilities, I'll commission your order in the city, but it'll take a few days to set up. If you want to sell any animals, make a note in the ledger and I'll get the details ironed out for you. You can't sell pregnant animals, it'd be sad if you could, but then again, selling any animals a little sad, ain't it? Oh. The milk processing room is for, well, processing milk into butter and cheese. With the cheese maker, the quality of the end product will depend on the milk you use to make it. Same deal with the butter maker. If high quality milk goes in, high quality butter comes out. A single crop can be processed into two seeds with the seed maker. Pretty convenient stuff. It's real simple to use. Put a crop in the seed maker, then wait till it's done. No take backs once the crop's in though. If you save up enough, you can order one, but I heard that scientist guy around here might be making his own. Okay. If you've watched my playthrough of the original game, you'll know the grave mistake that I made, which was I didn't become friends with Daryl, or at least I didn't get to the cutscene quickly enough because I became friends with Tech. And like, or I talked to Tech and he told me about the seed maker. And as soon as he did, and it was, I was able to order it, I could not activate the cutscene with Daryl anymore. And therefore I could not get a free seed maker. The seed maker in the other game is like six grand, which is a lot in that game. So at first, especially because you don't have a lot of ways to make money. <sighs> so I'm glad they mentioned that. Need fertilizer? This machine's got you covered. Put in stuff you don't need and you'll get five whole bags. Wow. Stuff you don't need. Okay, it's like a failed dish. Cool. The fertilizer tank. This machine automatically dispenses fertilizer on a field twice a day. You can install one of them per field. The fertilizer will go where you've got crops planted so nothing gets wasted. Sweet! Fertilizer is dispensed at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. as long as the spreader is filled, so don't forget to put fertilizer in. And last but not least, the pond! Building a pond in the pasture ain't a bad idea. You might meet a few water-loving animals if you do. Oh. Ducks! Livestock. Keeping livestock. We've got a barn and a coop. If you want me to order animals, write it in the ledger and I'll bring them here. Every animal needs to be fed. Every... Feed them daily and you'll get plenty of byproducts like milk and eggs. Animals love to be brushed and snuggled too. Do that daily and you'll get higher quality byproducts. If you're gonna run this place, you'll need cows, sheeps, sheeps, and goats. A horse might be good for getting around too. Huh. But I wonder what the max amount you can have is. Does it say? I can get you cows and sheep, but you'll have to buy goats from Van, the peddler, during spring. Some of these notes, like, they're really, really helpful, but it kind of defeats the purpose of, like, playing the game and figuring it out on your own. Like, you'll eventually figure out that you can't buy goats th from the ledger, and then you'll see it in, like, year two or whenever it comes up, you know? And then it'll be like, oh my god, there's the goat, like, instead of just, like, expecting it. Some animals come in different varieties. With cows, you can take your pick from normal, normal brown, marble, or star. Different cows produce different varieties of milk, so try raising as many of them as you can. Livestock are raised in the barn. When you first get an animal, you'll want to pick a spot for its feed bin. So it looks like you can only have eight again, which sucks. <gasps> oh, oh. The barn fits eight animals, but if you expand it, up to 16 will fit! Yes! This is what I've been asking for more than anything in this game, because that is the most flawed thing from the first game. It was awful, because you have to, especially because of all the like pregnancy stuff and whatever, like with the cows, because they want it to be realistic, like, god, you, you have to pretty much sell your animal just to have like a variety of animals. You can't even have like goats and sheep and all the types of cows because you just don't have the space. Like, thank God, oh my God, okay. Sorry, I'm very happy with that news. All right, the barn has a fodder dispenser. Any grass you cut gets stored there. You can put fodder in there too. There's also an isolation space for pregnant animals. Put them there right before they give birth. 
Oh, she's so happy. Gonna have her baby. Crops. Proper crop care. <laughs> Say that five times fast. Proper crop care. Proper crop care. Proper crop care. Brava. For crops, till your fields with a hoe before sowing seeds. Make sure you sow them in the right season, too. Each crop you grow is in one of three categories. Basic fruits and veggies, roots crop, root crops, and tree crops. I'm sorry. I'm tired. Crops thrive in different seasons, so make sure you read the labels and plant your schedule. Sorry, had to. Come on, tag. Enough of the dad jokes. Fruits, veggies, and root crops need water daily if you want them to grow. Want them to grow. But trees grow just fine without it. I didn't know that, actually. I've probably been wasting a lot of time and energy watering trees in the first game. I'm just gonna leave them now and see what happens. I mean, I'll fertilize them, but I ain't gonna water them. Keep an eye on the shade and color of your soil. If it's lighter, that means your crop could use a drink. Kind of like looking at your own hydration. If your pee is very yellow, go get some water. Put that Red Bull down. Do it. And be careful when planting trees. They need space to properly grow, so leave plenty of room for them. I wonder how you get those, though. Do you have to put the little stones, or does it automatically happen? We'll find out. You've got two small fields right now. You could probably make an amazing field out of that space in the back. Dot dot dot. Soil quality varies between fields. The field next to the coop isn't too fertile, but the one further out is a bit better. It's actually farther out, I think, is the right term. But anyway, some crops will only grow if the soil quality is good, so be sure you've got the right soil for the job. Don't just plant seeds all willy-nilly. Some crops only grow in certain seasons or soil types. That much is evident. Thank you, game. You just said that. If you want to know the ideal conditions for growing a crop, examine the bag of seeds before you sow them. If your crops only grow in certain seasons, plant them as early as you can so they don't wither away. Fertilizer boosts a crop's quality. Some crops will need more than others, so keep an eye on them if you plan to use it. By the way, if your crops are top quality already, you can't put fertilizer on them. I hear they sell fertilizer spreaders in the, ci in the city. Order one if you want your fertilizing done automatically. A few days after a fruit or vegetable flowers, it'll start ripening. Once it's done, you can harvest it. You can harvest root crops a few days after their flower wilts. Interesting. Trees need to be fully grown if you want their crops. They'll start flowering before they bear fruit. If a tree is covered in flowers... Oh, okay. Check out the way they do their grid. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. If a tree is covered in flowers, it means you'll have a bushel full of tree crops to look forward to next season. When it's time to harvest, give your trees a good shake and pick up any ripe crops that fall to the ground. I hear some farmers breed their crops to make new ones. If I find out more about that, I'll keep you posted. Another weird rumor, flower DNA can help crops. Happy lamps, sage soils, up seeds, and trick blue specifically. That is directly from the original game too, so. This is actually really cool, really helpful. I'm glad that they did this in this game, you know, made a little guide for you because otherwise it's really elusive and you just kind of have to know by like looking it up or experience just playing the game and figuring it out. So that's it for crops. Tools. Using a hoe. You can till your fields with the hoe. Crop seeds can then be planted in the tilled soil. You can use the hoe to get rid of any trees or seeds you don't need. Oh. How? How can you- what? That doesn't even make sense. Why would you do that? Do you not have an axe to get rid of trees? Uh, Alright. For regular crops, use your sickle. The hoe I gave you is pretty standard, but there are better ones out there. Maybe a friend could lend you one. So, obviously... Van will have better ones, so you can buy them from him, probably. And I'm sure you can probably get, like, a special one from someone that you befriend in the village, so there's that, too. Using higher quality tools won't tire you out as much. A better hoe could plow more squares at once. Yes! Okay. I talked about this, too. Um, this is something we desperately need power-ups in, in this game, because... 
it is very tiring to use these these tools all the time especially like a watering can because you use that every day and you can only water one square at a time so it kind of discourages you from having a lot of crops because it ends up taking a lot of time to water them and you have to water them twice a day most of the time so it's very time consuming and yeah anyway we needed that really bad badly so I'm glad they did that using a sickle sickles are used to cut fully grown grass in the pasture and crops you might not need anymore any grass you cut will be sent to your silo where it can be used as fodder for your animals the sickle I gave you ain't the best, so you might want to buy a better one. Maybe someone here could share theirs. Using higher quality tools won't tire you out as much. Better sickle cuts more at a time. Okay, same pattern. Props need their daily drink of water, and the watering can is just the tool you'll need to keep you need to keep them hydrated. I gave you a p okay. Yes. So Van is apparently the person who has all the better tools. So cool, yeah, you can water up to nine squares at a time. Thank goodness. And that looks like a silver watering can, so you could probably even do more than that if you do gold or potentially even higher grade than gold. Brushes are used to groom animals. Face your animals to brush them and you'll make their whole day. A well-groomed animal is a happy, healthy animal, so try to keep your furry friends nice and clean. Well, at least it's really obvious when they're dirty in this one because there's like mud smears. <laughs> the last one, it, they just look kind of dusty. Milkers can be used on cows and goats. To milk an animal, you'll want to face them before you put your milker to use. Oh, you can upgrade your milker too, huh? Using higher quality tools won't tire you out as much. Newer milkers also let you win milk several animals at once? What? That's bizarre. It's just like a really weird thing to think about. I don't see this picture. I see it with like a bunch of tubes attached to all of them. It looks very industrial in my mind. Clippers are for sheep's wool. Use them on any sheep with a full and fluffy coat. When you want to shear a, sh shear a sheep, <laughs> be sure you're facing it before you get started. Clippers, okay. Using higher quality tools. Uh, I hear newer clippers can shave more wool at once too. Okay, that is worth getting if you do have a sheep because you can get more wool product. Yes, that's the right way that I want to say that. More wool by using better shears. You can catch fish with a fishing rod. Fish are good eaten, cooked, or raw, but you could probably sell them too. There's a ton of different fishing rods out there. Heck, maybe someone here can lend you one of theirs. The better your fishing rod, the bigger and rarer your haul will be. Good luck landing those lunkers. As long as you're holding the camera, you can take photos whenever the mood strikes. If you want to see the photos you've taken, just check the album on your side table. Your album can only hold so many photos, so keep an eye on how much room is left in there. By the way, I say this in my video about the tools, which I include the camera in as well. Um, there were, this album reminds me a lot of the one from Animal Parade because you could have up to 25 photos and it looked almost just like that, I think, on the bottom, like with the number and everything. So, uh, lots of nostalgia there for me. And I'm, that was one of my favorite parts of that game because it was such a beautiful game and I was so happy when they included a camera option so you could, like, you know, through the viewfinder, look around and you can do it on this one now and it's like, it makes the game, it makes the game feel more immersive and like you're a part of the world and you get to see it with your own eyes from a different angle. It's really cool. So it's like first person view for the first time in this game. It's nice. The house. The house. What's in your house? It ain't much, but I hope you like your house. I put as much in it as I could, so take a look around. In any case, your house is mostly for sleeping, but you can cook and listen to your records, too. Maybe if you live here long enough, you can expand the place a bit. I'd love to see that little house grow. How to cook. Got fresh produce from the farm? Might as well cook, it with, cook with it in your kitchen. The more you cook, the better you'll get at it. If you get real good, you'll be able to cook tons of recipes. You'll need an oven to cook, it, cook certain recipes. Once you get the space for it, I can bring you one. Okay, oh, okay, so you need to upgrade your house to get the oven. 
You should try cooking different. Wait, how do you upgrade your house? Is that in year two or what? Hmm. Learning recipes. You should try cooking different recipes when you can. The more you practice, the more you'll learn. We have plenty of food, good cooks, sorry, in the valley who can teach you. Keep an eye out for their recipe notes too. Uh, by the way, Lou is notorious for being a good cook, and she is someone that you want to befriend in the other games as well that she's featured in, like, especially the DS game. And, uh, also, she's a special character in Friends of Min- uh, In Story of Seasons, Friends of Mineral Town, which is, like, the Story of Seasons remake of that one. And, uh, she, like, visits the inn once a week. You can befriend her, and then she'll- I think you befriend her by giving her food, but I can't remember. But she will uh, give you recipes and things like that, and then you can use those recipes to befriend other people or to marry them, like the gourmet. So, anyway, just a little thing for you to know about her. I left a record player in her house. Every job's a little easier when you've got a good tune to whistle to. If you get your hands on any new records, put them on the record player and you're all set. We've got a lot of music lovers in the valley. If you get along with them, they might give you an old record or two. Thank you for telling us, because that's something that nobody ever really tells us. You just have to learn it yourself as well. And I think it's only in the special edition that you can get records. I don't remember. Using the calendar. The calendar on the wall lists local festivals and Vans market days. Give it a look from time to time. Any deliveries you get will be sent to your deposit box. I'll stuff in your smaller orders and profits there too. Think of it as a mailbox for big packages and gifts from the locals, I guess. The deposit box can only hold so much though, so keep your eye on it. Don't want it to fill up on you. Like that voicemail box. <laughs> All right, the last one. The Forgotten Valley. If you're gonna be living here, you might as well make the most of it. There's more to life than farming. My advice? Chat with the locals and find out what they like so you can give them some gifts. If you want to be on someone's good side, check out the bulletin board and help them with their requests. You can help at the dig site and go fishing too. The dig site's got stuff you won't find anywhere else. The valley ain't that big, but if you get lost, check your map. With it, you'll be able to see where everyone is. That's really handy. That's also a feature they had in Animal Parade and I think Tree of, Tran Tree of Tranquility. Um, and Magical Melody. Yes. Magical Melody might have been the first one that did that. But um, yeah, that was really helpful so you could find people to give gifts to before you like, you know, the day runs out and they're gone. They go into their house. You can't access them. The weather's fickle out here, and it rains more often in some seasons, so keep an eye on the forecasts. There's a weather program on TV, but it ain't 100% accurate, so be ready for anything. Man, I really hope that the festivals are not cancelled if it rains, like, like it rains at 6am, the festival's at 5pm, and it won't happen, even if it's sunny at 5, like, ridiculous. I hated that about the other game. If you need something you can't order from the city, you should buy from the locals and support their businesses. For anything crop related, Vesta's probably got it. If you need a quick bite, try the cafe. We don't have anything too exciting aside from that, though Van the Paddler might. Look at his little, his little uh, cart, it's cute. Vesta will sell you seeds and fertilizer for all your crop growing needs. If you talk to her or the others on the farm, they'll usually ask you if you want if, if you want to buy anything. Look at that picture, it's such a good photo. The Bluebird Cafe is a great place for a cup of joe and a light meal. Talk to Gavin at the counter to place an order. There's no takeout options, so you'll have to eat there, but a meal from Gavin's will perk you up if you're tired. Van the Peddler comes to the valley on the 3rd and 8th of each month. He sells all sorts of stuff. He'll buy anything you don't need, too, so you might as well sell your old things while you're there. Really? They're gonna have you sell- <laughs> The example picture is failed dishes. You can make fertilizer out of that. One day. If you've got items you can't ship out, you should sell them to Van or open your own shop stall. 
you can open a stall in the plaza between the cafe and the inn, as long as Van ain't set up for the day. If you plan to set up shop, timing is key. You'll want to sell during the day when people are out and about. Once you've put out the items you want to sell, you can open your stall. Don't sell anything too important. Notice the bulletin board by the inn? No, because I haven't left the house. But thank you for asking. People post requests there. Take a look when you have a sec. If you take someone's request, you'll have to deliver the items to them directly. Don't keep them waiting. We're almost done, we're almost done. The dig site. There's a dig site by the waterfall. If you help out the professor there, he'll let you keep anything he doesn't need. You can fish in front of any body of water. The river, the spring, the turtle pond, the ocean, you name it. After you cast out your line, you gotta wait for a fish to bite. Patience is key here. Here's a tip. Don't try to reel in your catch if it's just nibbling at the bobber, or it'll swim away. Beyond the valley. Ever want to go to other towns? You can cross the mountain pass, but only during the daytime. A round trip will take you about six hours. There's plenty to enjoy, so go visit when you've got some time. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How? How do you do this? What? Okay, I know I haven't even started playing the game. <laughs> yet I'm sorry about that but that's crazy we're gonna have to go check that out like ASAP okay so uh yeah unfortunately for today or at least for this episode that's all the time that I have because uh it's kind of ran up just from reading that manual and doing the the very beginning intro um so, what do you guys think so far? I'm I'm having fun. This is really cool. Uh, it's a really cool experience for me. I'm If I wasn't having so many issues with my program that I'm using, I would probably have more fun and I'm like exhausted. So that doesn't help. <laughs> I'm like grumpy about it. But overall, I'm I'm enjoying the changes that they've made and the stuff that they've kept the same so far, you know super fun um it's cool that you can customize your character that's obviously new for a wonderful life because you just played as one of the two characters a male or female and they had a stock look and so that's pretty cool even though the customizations are not as big a deal for me probably because like i've kind of mentioned before I look kind of like the main character always because she always has brown hair and she's always white and she typically has brown or like green eyes or something I don't know the eyes it doesn't really matter as much to me but there's always something that I can relate to and so I'm really glad they've opened up that experience for more people um, a wider variety of people with different skin colors different hair types and people who don't identify as a male or a female. So that's really cool that they have these options now. The pronoun thing is really progressive of them. Pronoun thing, you know what I'm saying. So overall, very proud of the company for doing that. Um, it's definitely a positive move. Um, then uh, it's cool to see how the cutscenes are kind of the same and a little different, of course, because it's a remaster and the game is different now. But they almost like verbatim copied the original game, uh, kind of. I mean, they copied the themes at least and the way the cutscenes work, it's like the same scenes with the new backdrop and the new characters. And so um, that's really cool because for those of you like me who played the original games like it's really nostalgic it's really cool and it's cool to see the changes that they've made as well because it is 20 years in the future so try to not be too critical if you're upset with some of the changes because it's been 20 years man like go play the original game if you want everything to be the same like i'm glad that some stuff is changing and there's a lot of new options that are really cool that you didn't get before, so I'm really excited about using the camera, uh, trying out the the digging at the dig site, 
the bulletin board. I think that's a cool little feature because it gives you something extra to do, especially when you get down the line in the game, and especially if, um, especially if they have unique um, requests all the time instead of it just being kind of the same thing every season or something. Um, that will help keep the game kind of, you have something to do, you have a goal, um, a little mission in mind. So I like that, and I think it's a good idea because then you get stuff back from it too, so why not? Why not try it? And you can uh, also become better friends with people by completing their little uh, requests. So there's lots of reasons to do it. I like how the valley looks from what I got to see just from the opening cutscene. We can talk about all that more later because we're gonna actually go out and play our first day in the second video. So, um, I just, this one's getting really long, especially because of reading that manual, but I wanted to make sure that I read it and everybody's on the same page about everything. And so that way you know why I might be doing something in the game. I mean, I will obviously talk about it too, but I also wanted you to be able to see that feature, so if you were interested, you can watch it. But if not, whatever, you can skip it. I don't care. So, anyway, I like it a lot so far. I'm excited. My screen's getting dark because I'm taking too long. All right, we can talk more in the next one. So, thank you so much for watching. I'm exhausted. Today's a great day. It's a great week. It's release week. It's the game we've been waiting on, so... Go get it if you have the opportunity, and if you're still waiting on your pre-order, then I am so sorry. I feel your pain. I just blew some more money on this game, but it's okay, because I'll support them, because I love them. But anyway, thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!